Hi, this is Russ from Production Expert, and I want to show you about a great new plugin that I think a lot of Final Cut users are going to be saying hallelujah about. Now, if you think it's free, then stop watching now, because it's not free, it costs money, and of course, time is money. Now, let's talk about the usual way of having to duck audio in Final Cut. Now, what you'd normally do is probably come in, you'd press the region tool, you'd mark the area, and you'd simply grab the audio and duck it like that. It would be quite simple. You'd then clean it all up a bit and do that with the front, and at the back here you'd do the front and you'd duck it like that. Now you might say, well that's quite quick and it doesn't take, doesn't take long to do, but it takes a bit of time to get it right and to tweak it and to do things like that. So what lots of Final Cut editors have been asking for for a long time is a tool to do auto ducking. Now the problem with Final Cut Pro is that you don't have any mixer channels. It's clip-based audio. So there's no mixer, there's no buses. And so even if you had things like compressors that you could use to send side chains into duck it, you can't do it. But now, Audified have come up with this really cool tool. It's two-part, and it's called Speak Up Performer and Speak Up Sensor. And it's really simple to use. So on the track where the voice is, and the clips where the voice is, you have the Speak Up Sensor. Here's the sensor, and it just drops on, and I've just chosen the standard setting. I haven't messed with it at all. And then on the clip where the music bed is, you open that one up as well, and you have Speak Up Performer. Let me show you that. And there's Speak Up Performer. There's both of them now. And they're Audio Units plugins. And now I'll just play it you first just in its standard setting, then I'll show you how you can tweak it. So let me play this and you'll hear it in action. This is just thrown on the video and the music bed and then left to do its own thing. Watch what it does. I think the most important thing people can do to improve their mixes are to go back to actual producing stage record it properly, arrange it properly, and make sure the song is actually rocking before you start mixing it. Get the performance and the, the source sounds right, basically. So do you subscribe to the idea that, it's, that, it's, that a great song mixes itself? Absolutely. And there you hear it come back in at the end. So it starts as it would. I think the most and there's the ducking going on. Now you have a target attenuation level, so basically I just throw this on and leave it. You might want to play with it a bit if you need to. But this is an interesting piece actually, because it's me interviewing uh, this uh, mixer, right. Jonas Wessling, and here you hear me ask him a question. Uh, and so I have two bits of basically dialogue I've got to get the ducking right on. Uh, you have target attenuation, if we, if we play that, so we can turn One it up or down. One thing people can do to improve their mixes are to go back to actual producing stage record it properly, arrange it properly. Now they've really thought about this because they've also got speech fre frequency attenuation and what I often do with music beds is I take some of the top end out and some of the frequencies that affect the sort of speech region and they thought about that and they've done this too so you can actually turn it so it doesn't have any effect and let me just play you that. And make sure the song is actually rocking before you start mixing it. We'll turn it right up so it does yeah, a real carve out of all those source sounds right things and then of course you could then get your attenuation down a bit further so you, you might want a music bed that's got a bit, a bit more energy to it, but you don't want it to still intrude on the dialogue. And I think the most important thing people can do to improve their mixes are to go back to actual producing stage, record it properly, There's the whole track. it properly, and make sure the song is actually rocking before you start mixing it. Get the performance and the... Then we have a fade in and a fade out time, so obviously there's a, there's a, you can have it sort of cliff edge at both sides. I think the most important... What I'm going to do as well is just turn up that music bit a bit more as well because it, it was a bit hot to start with. So I'm going to put it back at sort of virtually zero dB. I think the most important thing people can do to improve their mixes are to go back to actual producing stage, record it properly, arrange it properly. And Serious at the end? Absolutely. Now, for me, that's a bit weird now. So I'm going to just... You can choose either one of the presets. So I'm going to do... Kind of a short fading and short fade out, a bit of hold time as well. Let's hear that one now. I think the most important thing people can do to improve their mixes are to go back to actual producing stage. So that sounds more Record natural properly, now. Arrange it properly and make sure the song is actually the target attenuation down a bit. Mixing it. Get the performance and the, the source sounds right. Basically. Now, the other thing is if we go back to the other. Plug in here for a second on the voice, the sensor. I'll give you an idea of what happens when you change that sensitivity. 
I think the most important thing people can do to improve their mixes are to go back to actual producing stage. Record it properly, arrange it properly. And if you then pull the look ahead down and have the sensitivity quite high, you then obviously get it to, because it ducks in and out, which some people hate, it kind of gets that pumping effect. I think the most important thing people can do to improve their mixes are to go back to actual producing stage record it properly, arrange it properly, and make sure the song is actually rocking before we start mixing it. This time I'm actually going to mute this area where we have the question answered by me and just see what happens now. Get the performance and the, the source sounds right, basically. Absolutely. So it's just a case of tweaking these till you've got what you like. I've been playing with it, I have to say, having done literally hundreds of hours of manually doing this this is a godsend uh, if you're a final cut user and you don't have access to to sound people that are going to be doing that mixing for you then this is a gift and uh, well worth checking the download you can download a trial uh, you'll need an iLock account but not an iLock physically to use it and that's the process for the license working and you could try it out uh, Take, take a spin. Let me know what you think. I, I think it's a real gift. I'm guessing Apple might do it at some point, but in the meantime, this will save me hours of time, and of course, time is money. Thanks for watching.